Welcome to Nature Therapy Online. Hi there, welcome to Season 1, Episode 11 of Nature Therapy Online. I'm Stephen McCabe, I'm an ecotherapist working online and I'm delighted that you're listening to the podcast. So, um, without further ado, I'm going to get straight on with this episode's theme, which is an amazing interview I've just completed with the artist and ecotherapist from Edinburgh, Scotland, Stephanie Whitelaw. This was such a lovely interview, and I'm so glad that Stephanie gave us her time. So um, without further ado, I'm going to hand you over to the interview. And um, yeah, and just let you know that over the next month, I'm going to be recording a series of interviews with Inspired and Ecotherapy therapists from all across the world so keep tuned in for that and um, here we are here's my interview with Stephanie. Hi there so I'm here with Stephanie Whitelaw who is an artist and ecotherapist uh, both from and also living in Edinburgh the beautiful capital of Scotland and um, Stephanie is a really inspiring person to me. She's done so many interesting projects, um, I guess, on that intersection between art and ecotherapy. She has worked in Japan. She has worked in Scotland, and she's currently doing some really interesting projects online as well. So thanks so much for being here, Stephanie. Hello, and how are you today? Oh, it's a joy. It's a joy to be here. Um, and I'm very well. Um, I've been sort of looking forward to this conversation with you and have sort of sat with the questions and, and sort of let them ruminate. And yeah, it feels like a really nice time to actually be having this conversation anyway. And coming back to, yeah, maybe like an anchoring point with my work and what I'm doing. And I think questions can be a bit like gifts so it feels like this is a bit of a gift sort of mm. to, to um, reflect on what I'm doing and, and going forward at this time and, and given the circumstances of where we are. So, yeah, it's, it's a joy to be here. That's lovely. Thanks, Steph. And it's a joy to have you. OK, so I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit, Stephanie, about um, about your work with art and with nature and about any projects that you're up to at the moment yeah absolutely um I think really it's probably a good place to start at the beginning of the year um which feels like yesterday um but has somehow fast forwarded to now um and yeah I mean I've been working the sort of the intersection between art and nature it it feels like a marriage to me it feels like they both mirror each other and both complement each other and, and are both pretty intrinsically connected and that one feeds the other. So the workshops that I have been leading and, and began to lead at the start of the year were focused on walking in the environment and sensing the environment and making site responsive works, um, which really can take on any sort of um, method in terms of writing, drawing, land art, photography, um, and really, really not about exactly what's being created, but just how that person feels um, connected to the space and how they then might want to express that. So originally, um, these these eco walks, these eco art walks, I've been calling them, that I was facilitating at the start of the year. Um, obviously had to be put on hold and I've since then sort of warped and altered the way that I've been running them and I really had to lean on technology mm. which I've resisted for a very long time in the way that I wanted to I suppose keep things I, I'm a bit of a purist so to keep things very pure in a sense of connecting with nature um, in a very um, you know uh, physical way and actually technology the 
it's been very helpful this time. The, I've, I've found technology to really enhance the way that I'm working with others. And so at the time when COVID unfolded for us all, I then had to sort of sit back and reflect and find new ways of working. And what I've been doing over the last couple of months has involved um, eco sound walks. So I've been developing pieces for the group that I've been working with. I work for a community center in Edinburgh called Bridge End Farmhouse. Mm. And I've been running these workshops through them. And they, they involve um, the distribution of sound walks. So I've been providing sound walks for the group members to take into the landscape and they can take this into their locality. So the walks can be listened to, they're about five to 10 minutes long and they can be listened to in their environment, wherever they choose. It could be their garden, it could be a nearby park, a woodland space, um, wherever they, they choose really. Um, and then we, we return every week over Zoom and we discuss and we share the work that has unfolded for them. And it's been a really lovely way of working because I think when you're in nature, it can be a very intimate exchange. And these sound walks, people are able to access and walk with them and listen to them. Um, in a very intimate way by themselves, but then also come back into the group later on and share their experience uh, in a collective way. Mm. And so it, it, technology, it's been a surprise, um, but also a, a big help at this time um, to lean on it in that way and to sort of enhance this experience rather than hinder it. Mm. I really like what you uh, how you uh, how you phrased that, Stephanie, because uh, I guess I related a lot to what you were saying about you know working as a, a, an ecotherapist and and you know you spend a lot of time, don't you? You know, like trying to encourage people to move away from screens sometimes, you know, and and move away from the all of these just endless distractions that we have. And yet when COVID happened, I found that same pattern that straight away, the first thing that occurred to me was how can I continue to um, function as an ecotherapist? And the very first thing I thought was technology. You know, I wasn't going to be, you know, sending people letters in the mail, you know, so it, it, it makes a lot of sense. And I think it sounds it sounds to me like what you're what you're saying is you you began to um uh, embrace the uh, technology as a tool that can help people engage with nature rather than see it as a distraction is it something like that yes absolutely absolutely mm. um and i think there's something also very valuable about this way of working in that it's on the individual's own time and also the decision to go where they like so this this aspect of taking a sound piece with you that's very light in its prompts anyway they're only mm. invitations invitations to perhaps look at something on a micro level um focus on color in the landscape focus on form really simple invitations but that then that individual is taking that wherever they like, walking wherever they like, mm. and experiencing it in their own way. So it kind of, there's a sort of independence, I feel, with this sort of leaning on technology, and that it's an individual experience, but then at the same time, you can be connected. And I think that's what technology has allowed for at this time, in that you can be on your own experiencing something, but at the same time, sort of simultaneously, you can be connected to someone else where, um, you know, over time zones, even over um, borders. I mean, what's been very interesting as well in some of these workshops I've been running is that when we come back together as a group, there is an amazing sense of synchronicity in what people have experienced. So you might have someone, you know, on one side of Edinburgh that went for a walk on a Monday morning, and then another one in Edinburgh that went for a walk on the other side of Edinburgh. Um, you know, in the evening later that week, and both of them may have had a very similar experience. Um, there's, there was a circumstance, there was um, a workshop recently that I ran and, and two individuals in the group had 
experienced birds, two birds flying overhead, and it had been really, really profound for them at that moment. But of course it happened in their own space, on their own time, but it was very shared. They shared that, they shared that synchronicity. So there is that sense of, um, you know, connection over space that, that technology allows for in a way that, yeah, we, that can be an opening. It can open up new opportunities of, of being together and connecting with each other. That's really lovely. And I, even when you mentioned that, I just felt like what a, an experience that must have been for those people, you know, to be in a, at a, in a different place at a different time. And yet, this you know shared experience you know of uh, connecting with this bird person you know how uh, how beautiful that is to have the the time alone to experience it and also the time to then go and connect with someone and I guess it you know it it, it, it brought me on to something else I wanted to to ask you about actually which was um uh, spirituality and nature and 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 your feelings around that because you know I, I suppose we all have different ways of experiencing um ecotherapy and nature therapy and um you know for some people it feels you know you know i guess it reflects our own perspective on life in many ways how we connect with the landscape and I suppose for me, when I heard that experience, I thought, oh, that, that felt like a very spiritual, uh, uh, that maybe that's the lens I look at things through. It felt like it could have been a very spiritual experience for someone. So, so yeah, I guess my question is quite a broad one. And that is, you know, how, how does, you know, the concept of spirituality, um, I guess, come into your, your experiences with nature, either in your work or, or personally or, or any way, really? Mm. Yeah, and, and I, I really love this question. Um, and again, like I'd said at the start, it feels like a gift, this question at this time to sort of reflect on what that, you know, what spirituality is within my own practice and life. And I think the naming of things can sometimes be challenging um, and that we we often have these experiences that are spiritual, but we may be you know, there's a resistance to maybe call them spiritual, just like those birds, just like that interaction, that conversation. And I feel like ecotherapy and spirituality, again, they go hand in hand for me and that they both offer ways into being in conversation with this sense of otherness, you know, this sense of being connected to a larger whole. Um, and I think in practicing ecotherapy, you you enter into that conversation with other beings in the environment, whether they're human or non-human. And I went, I went for a walk today. I, I was sort of, you know, reflecting on this question and I went for a walk and I'm in the center of Leith right now, which is a very built up urban space. You know, there's roadworks outside. There's quite a harshness um, in the landscape here at this time. And I went for a walk to the water, the water of Leith, and on my way there, I had really beautiful encounters um, with people. With I, I went for a coffee, I picked up a coffee and I had a beautiful exchange with the owner. Um, it was very a connected conversation, a conversation about the water and small talk as well, but really significant small talk. And then, you know, walked further and there were three ducks in the water and then walked a little bit further and there was sort of a, a series of pigeons, a scattering of pigeons that were sort of all over the place, um, quite frantic. And also, you know, I had an exchange with two other people and I, I can see their faces now, a really lovely smile exchange between them. And that walk, that really simple walk, just from my house to the water, maybe 15 minutes long, and this sort of thread of encounters along the way, was really beautiful and it made me kind of think of this question you've been asking and or were going to ask me um, about ecotherapy and spirituality and I really feel it's acknowledging these threads um, or let's say one thread um, that joins all these encounters and all these exchanges that we have with other beings um, in our in our environment and that we're you know we are threaded together um, 
And I think that it can help us acknowledge that the focus time spent in nature or otherwise, you know, it can help us acknowledge that we are part of this together. It's, mm. it's, a, it's one whole that we are within. That's really, really beautiful. Thanks for sharing that, Stephanie. And, and I, I really enjoyed your example of the pigeons as well. I, I, you know, I, I think sometimes we, um, with nature therapy, um, and ecotherapy, I, t- I tend to use both terms interchangeably. Um, but I think very often we can uh, picture it happening, you know, in the woodlands or by the beach or in these, you know, really, um, you know, wild spaces. And I was chatting with um, Caroline Brazier from the Tariki Trust about this, and and mm-hmm. and just how you know nature really is everywhere. And I, I I love I loved in your response that you know you 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 acknowledge that yeah I, I might be in a really built up area with a lot of roadworks but that doesn't make this any less of a of a spiritual experience than if I was by the sea so so thanks for that and it it also brought me on to um another question I wanted to ask you um because you know that that, that sounded like a really quite simple but quite powerful way of feeling connected so I I wondered you know I I guess a bit about your background I suppose and you know um, if you know nature is something you've always been connected with or if there was any particularly powerful moments that you've had in nature in the past that you think may have led you on this journey to becoming a, 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 a nature therapist yes um I mean, I see it all as a returning. I see sort of everything, the work within ecotherapy, nature therapy, as a returning. Um, And I think I've sort of been on that trajectory maybe for um, about 10 years now, Um, slowly but surely. And it was art, really. It was art making that sort of initiated this understanding and longing this real longing to connect with the landscape and that was coming through my art at that time I was um, working with land art ephemeral art working with natural materials in the landscape which I still do now Um, but it was a longing then I think I answered that with art making I sort of answered those questions with making art in the landscape and I think from that point on um I've just constantly been answering the longing and you know I think ecotherapy is that it's it's an answering to the longing that we all feel that's all that we all inherently feel uh, and this sense of home it sort of it feels like a homecoming and you know I always think about the etymology of the word ecos and it's oikos from latin and it means home and I think it is about just sort of returning to that sense of home um and i mean it can happen in any way like you say this we are nature we're part of nature um and that exists everywhere it's inherent everywhere and i think that's become more prevalent for me this sort of longing to access it anywhere and everywhere um and i'm thinking of sort of more recent significant moments as well for myself i mean Yesterday was a very, it's very near to me, so it feels important to share. But yesterday was a hugely significant day for me. And I visited um, North Berwick Beach, which is a town, a seaside town outside of Edinburgh. And I sort of, I got lost in a bit of bubble time. I always talk about bubble time with ecotherapy, nature therapy, that you you sort of enter this realm where you lose sense of of time you know you might I suppose you might get it in the same way if you're making music or creating art or maybe in a conversation with someone you sort of step into that held realm um, where time sort of passes Um, and I sort of stepped into that yesterday on the beach and I got my hat I got my hands in the sand my feet in the sand it's a very sensory experience and really started working with stone. I started picking up the pebbles and the stones and the seaweed and just really sort of entering into that place of touch. 
And I think touch has been probably more significant now than ever because of the, lo the, the lacking, you know, we, we aren't able to touch each other in the same way. We aren't able to access each other in the same way. So being in the landscape and being able to touch um, and hold these natural forms, I think has become even more magnified. The, the sense of it's become more magnified. And so I really got lost in that, that sense of timelessness yesterday. And, and especially with the stone, I always, you know, feel when I'm holding a stone or a rock, it has such a long story. It has such a hugely long story. Yeah. And then it's led up to this time and it's in my hand. And, you know, I sort of entered into that space yesterday. And it was an interesting day for me as well, because I... I had found out the news of a, a friend of mine and she's about to have a baby mm. and she's pregnant now. And, and yesterday was also the um, birthday of a friend I lost um, a year ago. Mm. So it was an interesting parallel and I found a rock, I found a stone and I buried this stone for the new life that, is unfolding um, in my friend with my friend and I also went to the sea and I took a shell to the sea and I said a blessing to the life of my friend that's passed but is now moving on to another form um, and I was able to sort of walk into that space of life death and life yesterday there was that cycle mm. that was present there and the space itself, the seascape itself, gave me this opportunity to have a ceremony, you know, have a ceremony and, and bless something that's along the way, coming along the way and something that's gone. And I think, you know, ecotherapy can, can help us step into that place or acknowledge that sense of the cycle of life, death, life, and that we are, we are part of that as well. You know, I mean, you just walk along the beach and you can see, you know, the decaying seaweed or you can see the, sometimes the skeletons of birds and it's all there and it's, you know, we're part of that too. So it can really, instead of resisting it, it can help us to acknowledge it and, you know, not be afraid of it, not to fear it. And it's something that's perhaps not spoken about so openly in the West. You know, I think we have a strange relationship with that aspect of the life death life cycle and so i really entered into that yesterday as well it was this sort of yeah bubble time of with the elements and and with um this cycle and it was very special me special to me it was very special to me yesterday so that for me feels like a significant moment mm -hmm. to share with you at mm -hmm. this time and, and really beautiful and and you know uh, I, I wish um we could see each other on on the screens to see how just how much i was smiling and, and nodding when you were talking about that experience it, you know it almost brought a tear to my eye and it just reminded me just how you know j just how powerful in embracing nature can be you know it, it and i think it's also you know what what you've just you know expressed there is is you know uh, shows us how i think ecotherapy is about connecting you know and i think sometimes people have an idea that you know we um we promote going out in nature to take our mind off our troubles or to take our mind away from life and reality. And, and in fact, I think the way I perceive this kind of, uh, this kind of work and this kind of um, way of being in nature as a way of actually connecting with everything. And I think you've just put that in a nutshell so beautifully. And, and also I was, you know, um, really you really liked what you said about him um, you know touch at the moment you know with the way we're living our lives and and how how powerful actually physically connecting with the environment you know uh, can be so you know i, I wondered if um you know I, I guess as like you know leading up to you know slowly towards the end of our interview um i mean you gave so many examples of ways that people can connect with nature there already you know so i'm really grateful for that but i wonder if you 
um, you know, maybe have any simple ecotherapy tips in mind, like maybe an exercise that you particularly like that you would like to share with the listeners? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I think there's been quite a few really um, over the last couple of months. And perhaps the most significant one that I have found for other people in the groups I'm leading has been particularly around sit spots um, and also the element of earth. So in, in the workshops I've been leading recently, we've been working with different elements um, that are present in the landscape and how we might then embody those qualities. And earth at this time has obviously been quite significant in terms of feeling a sense of rootedness, feeling a sense of groundedness when we're in quite unpredictable territory right now and it's quite unpredictable terrain. So a sit spot is somewhere, it's a term in ecotherapy where you would um, sit within and it would be somewhere that would be safe to you. It is somewhere that's safe to you. Um, and that might be a tree, that might be the beach, it could be a sort of secluded area in the forest, but somewhere where you can go and you can feel connected and safe to perhaps unfold maybe something creative or perhaps just to sit there and meditate. And we were working with this, this theme of sit spot, um, but particularly with trees. So the, the idea was to choose a tree, choose a tree that was significant to you and for that to then become your sit spot that you could return to um, when you needed and when you liked. And the exercise around the, exercise around the sit spot um, was through listening and drawing. So it was a listening and drawing exercise where um, just with a pencil and a piece of paper, if you were um, sitting with your tree, you would spend a few moments, there was a breathing and grounding exercise to start as well, just to sort of sink into the space. And that doesn't take too long, just a couple of minutes really, just tuning into your breath. And after that then to sit and use a simple line, almost like you're taking your, your pencil for a walk, a simple line across the page and to respond through drawing with what you could hear around you. Mm -hmm. and a very fluid drawing very fluid drawing and um the second part of that exercise was to sort of sit with your to sit with your tree and describe the qualities of your tree um and some of the qualities that were sort of spoken at that time were steadfast silent rooted patient and then those qualities were then something that you could work with throughout your week so those those elements those aspects you could embody um so there was yeah that this i think i think the thing as well which was interesting about this particular exercise was you know a tree the, the rootedness of a tree through you know whatever weather unpredictable weather is is so resilient and, and it's really a sort of an, an emblem of resilience a sort of totem in that respect and when you kind of tune into that and when you harness that energy um, it can be very comforting and very securing so as an exercise right now I think that's been very helpful for people to have this place that's almost like an anchor spot for them mm. an anchor spot to feel grounded feel rooted feel safe um, and to explore through drawing and, and the sounds that surround the tree are also the sounds that are surrounding you as well so you have that sort of intimate relationship with the tree at the time that you're sitting with it as well mm. so i would say i would say that's probably um the one that the, the the feedback anyway of this time has been around um the sit spot and working with earth as that particular element has been quite um significant for people at this time that, that's really lovely stephanie thank you and i, I like the the combination of um of using a sit spot with um with art you know um and art therapy and i would yeah encourage people to um to google the term sit spot it's um it's actually a term i only discovered myself fairly recently but i really like your um your unique way of working with it and bringing art into nature with it that that's great stuff and really um 
really really interesting work as always so so i mean that that's pretty much bringing us up to the end of the interview so i guess you know i would just um want to ask how people can find you online like is, do you have a, a website or a social media page or where, where would be the best place for people to find you yeah so there's i suppose there's a few avenues i do have a website um which you would find just as stephanie whitelaw.co.uk um, so there's access through that um, also if people are residents in Edinburgh um, to be aware of the Bridge End Farmhouse website also Facebook page um, because I'm running workshops there and there's a sort of feed of current activity there and I'll be starting um, a sort of autumnal series of workshops starting in the middle of September and I'm also collaborating with the herbalist so it's a collaboration of herbal walking and eco walking and art making wow. um, so I'd look out for that which I'm very excited about I'm very Sounds excited amazing. about amazing yeah yeah it, I think it will be a lovely combination um, of walks so to look out for that as well on on the Bridge End Farmhouse Facebook page that's amazing. Thanks so much, Stephanie. Thank you again for giving me your time and and offering up your your wisdom and your ideas to to the listeners. Um, I've had loads of ideas for ecotherapy just from the last twenty five minutes with you, which um, I'm probably going to pinch and steal. Um, if people don't know that about ecotherapists, we're always stealing ideas from each other. So that's exactly what I plan to do. But just thank you so much, Stephanie, for um, being so open and being so. Um, inspiring and lovely as always so um, that pretty much wraps us up so um, yeah was there anything else you wanted to share before we we end the interview I mean I just wanted to say thank you as well and it's been a lovely opportunity to talk with you at this time and I suppose archive um, what's happening at this time as well and perhaps what people are searching for um, to help them sort of weather this time. So mm -hmm. this feels like a really lovely opportunity. And um, yeah, I just wanted to say thank you. I mean, I don't think there's really anything I need to add. It feels like a beautiful conversation we've just shared. Mm -hmm. So just, just a thank you. And it's free for all, it always is. This is the thing you just said about, you know, <laughs> The ideas and pinching ideas but it's all it's all one way of working I think and I, that's what feels really healthy about ecotherapy and the way that you know ecotherapists work that it's all shared mm -hmm. and there's no ownership because at the end of the day it's nature our home mm -hmm. um, and we all share that home so mm -hmm the way that we are within that it's all equal you know that we all we all we all walk on the same soil and breathe the same air and swim in the same sea really mm -hmm. so it it's a shared it's a shared space so whatever inspiration you take from this it's it's all I, i'm more than happy i'm more than happy for you to take it because it's it's a mutual exchange isn't it yeah. Absolutely. What a lovely way to end the interview. Well, thank you so much, Stephanie Whitelaw. And I would encourage you all to go to her website and, and keep up to date with what Stephanie's up to. And, um, and thank you again, Stephanie. That's us for this interview and for this week. So I hope you have a lovely day, chicken. Thanks very much. Bye bye. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Bye bye. Thank you very much for tuning in, folks. I really hope that you enjoyed that interview as much as I did. So have a lovely week and I will see you next week. And yeah, if you're interested in signing up for an online ecotherapy course, you can sign up to one of those at naturecourses.info. Or if you're interested in exploring ecotherapy further and working with me professionally as an ecotherapist, you can find me at Nature Therapy 
www.thepowerofonline.net. So thanks again, folks. I'm really appreciating you tuning in and take care for now. Bye bye. Visit me online at naturetherapyonline.net. Thank you.